What's going on guys, Zisel here back with another video. I wanted to come out with uh, something to kind of help you guys uh, with these new mutated uh, dungeons. Pretty much, I, I see a lot of people struggling with it. Um, not be able to make it pretty much past the tier two so far. Um, I've already, uh, with a group, kind of made it all the way up to the tier six. Uh, kind of kind of put a pause on it there, got a little late. But I uh, wanted to go over how to really get through it push through it kind of cheese your way through it a little bit uh some helpful some helpful tips and tricks uh pretty much the first two are pretty standard uh you're gonna have your mutation eternal so the creeping the oblivion the void resist um i mean all of these things if you're dealing void damage you're gonna have a little bit more resistance nothing cra too crazy uh more so you're gonna need uh a pretty good tank um, with this, who who's probably gonna run, run in a little bit of a cooldown build. Um, and with that being said, the way I got through it uh, with the team, um, they're running Void Gauntlets uh, for the uh, the actual Invigorated Oblivion uh, to kind of help with my stamina uh, to to keep my shield you know maximized on this to to kind of get through and just and stay you know hold that aggro. Uh, and, and pretty much on this, just kind of going over it. Uh, Refreshing move, light and heavy attacks, reduce your active weapon cooldowns by 2.8%, and then enchanted. Uh, even though this has angry earthbane, I know it doesn't seem like it would be a really ideal weapon for Lazarus. This weapon actually does better than the uh, the vicious ancient bane and hated. So, so with that, I would personally, you know, see if a tank because most of these times are gonna, it's going to require a tight knit group. Uh, with with that being said, again. You're going to want that refreshing move uh, just for that defiant stance, the taunt, uh, just to maintain that aggro. It is very important to maintain that aggro. I can't I can't express that enough. The tank has to engage, start everything, hold that aggro. It's kind of based around your tank and your healer. And the DPS kind of just falls into that. It's like the, the glue. It all holds itself together. So, kind of pushing through that. It, this will work. Uh, but you're gonna want to switch a little bit switch it up because once you move up to The uh, the vampire where they heal um, and cast a shield that blocks player projectiles This is where the tank is, is gonna have a more vital role it's super important to play around the tank on this and with that I Highly recommend because this is what we built it off of and we've already made it through and I'm gonna show the video and everything The tank needs to run a sword with plate plague strikes like it is absolutely vital to this whole entire this whole entire group. If the tank is running plate strikes with anything else in between, that's fine. And it doesn't even have to be like a high end sword at at, at first, because you know you can get through and, and and maybe find a weapon down the road. But it is so vital on this, and you'll see why. So pretty much what happens is is that the tank can do heavy attacks, deal that disease for eight seconds. Uh, literally that is that is huge that is huge you, you don't want to run disease on your healer because then you're losing out on, on so much healing and everything so the void gauntlets they were running nullifying oblivion and invigorated oblivion and basically they said they kept that on top of me the entire time uh, another thing is is uh, sturdy on the shield that's really helpful when blocking all the the arrows the the strike damage or excuse me the uh, the impacts everything so Super vital. Like I said, uh, uh, that is the easiest way, and I'll show you the video uh, coming up. But I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Also, this chest piece that kind of that fell in my lap in Lazarus, really helpful. I swapped it out. I was I was running just void bent gear, kind of not even upgrading it. Just more so, I personally wanted to focus on my weapon. And uh, although I haven't got that all the way up, another good thing: sundering shockwave on the the warhammer for the tank super big deal it applies that Ren, so it reduces their damage absorption by 9.5 percent for 10 seconds they're already going to pull the aoe so they're using that sundering shockwave they're just applying that rend non-stop 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 makes it super easy to clear but uh yeah i mean that's that's pretty much what i would i would if you can get your group together tell them to uh run that plague strike on that that sword and then try to just go over this video and see how we kind of did it. I think you guys will make it through, it, be able to, you might even be able to do that from tier one and go all the way up. Uh, but I personally think the cooldown is more important in the beginning. 
to get you to where you're going to be going anyways. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, definitely leave a like, comment. Um, but I'm going to kind of go just throw the video in and then maybe do a little bit of voiceover on it and speed everything up for you guys. All right. I also wanted to include for you guys, um, I know tanking is, it didn't seem like a very important role uh, towards the beginning of the game and everything, but now it, it has become a lot more vital. It's a very important job uh, along with the healer. So what I run is 150 to 155 strength and 305 constitution. And then with the food buff, that'll, that'll pump it up a little bit. Um, I mean, you can respec uh, when you get to Chartus. If you need the DPS to make that 30 minutes, it, it, it definitely works. Uh, you can kind of cheese your way to that. But then as you upgrade your your you know, your gear score and everything, you won't have to do that. So I, I definitely feel like tanks uh, in a public domain should get a little bit more of a discount if they are going to respec mid, mid dungeon. It, it, it does help with the clear, just to at least push past that milestone, but they don't necessarily have to. Uh, so, I mean, you know, but... And then for my weapon mastery, what I run on Warhammer, I'll give you guys an idea. Juggernaut, Hammer Time. All right, gain in power on heavy attacks, increasing your AD by 20% for four seconds. Hardened Steel, adds grit to your Warhammer heavy attacks. Absolutely a must whenever you're dealing with these skeletons. Nothing but bones, guys, nothing but bones. Exhaustive Attacks, all Warhammer abilities apply. Exhaust, slowing target stamina regeneration by 20% for five seconds. Well, what do you know? Those guys carry shields mostly in there. So you're going to need that. It's a huge, huge, huge buff that you need. And the rest, I don't, I, I know you guys probably already know about everything, but clear out is really vital for clearing everything out to get off that damage. If you need to rebuild your stamina back up, super low cooldown already. Uh, outnumbered, obviously increased damage absorption when two or more enemies are going to be within, within you. So uh, within three meters. So you're already going to have that. You're going to have that with all the skeletons, all the mobs. Shockwave. I feel like this is super vital. I run Carnelian in, in both weapons. Uh, you're going to need that as well. So, I mean, you're pretty much just working around aggro and maintaining that that constant. You're a sponge. You're a damage sponge. That's what you should be doing. I run Path of Destiny. Literally just to, to pull that aggro straight to me without having to potentially go in take damage right away I, you can cause damage from far away and bring them closer to you so it's just a personal preference now for sword and shield all right this is the bread and butter always run reverse stab for the cooldown and then also if you can get a sword that has uh the reverse back uh the reverse stab but where it transfers the uh i'll pull this up sorry Contagious reverse stab. Reverse stab transfers an active debuff from self to target hit. So if you have bleed or anything like that, any debuffs on you, it's going to remove itself from you and obviously go onto the enemy that you're attacking and hitting that with. And the cooldown is already reduced whenever you're using that. So go back to sword and shield. So full three down. Uh, personally, I do deal 10% more damage to slow foes because I'm running empowered stab. And Achilles heal. So the final attack in your light chain inflicts 20% slow for two seconds. So you're dealing a little bit extra damage. You give you that oof. The oomph on critical gain 20% haste for five seconds. You're gonna want a little bit of movement speed to kind of get out of that sticky situation. Can't just hold your shield up the entire time. I mean you kind of can, but a lot of people for some reason like to run shield rush. I do not think that is a good tree at all to follow for PvE whatsoever. I think shield bash, the, the stun, the concussion that you cause, and then the taunt, uh, it just kind of helps. And then also, you know, it gives you more threat. It deals 100% more damage. Always run sturdy shield, 15% additional physical armor. The guys in uh, in Lazarus are already dealing a lot of physical damage in the first in the first five. So, lots of damage, lots of physical damage. Stamina damage is reduced by 15% when blocking a melee attack with a shield. That's huge. Defensive training when you block an attack. Gain four to five for five seconds. You're already gonna you're gonna stack up again the resistance fortification. Defiant stance. That is again bread and butter when this comes to it. Taunt gem. You're pulling that taunt. You're 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 literally just kind of the, the center of everything. Everybody should be working around the tank. Everybody should be working around you. Uh, if you guys aren't a tank and you're watching this, you need to know that 
you definitely want to let that tank go in uh, at first. Always. Just trust me. And then obviously defensive formation. Reduce the... the uh, reduce damage to all allies within 2 meters by 30%. Cool down 1 second. That, that's... It's, I mean, that's huge. That, that's a big deal. I saved uh, saved my boys a lot of a lot of time by uh, not letting them wipe because of that. So uh, that's pretty much what I run, personal preference. But uh, I've made it this far um, on day one of the release of the patch. So uh, I think you guys will enjoy it. Now, again, for the the um, the void gauntlets, nullifying oblivion, invigorated uh, oblivion. That, that's what uh, we had three of them, I believe. So. But I'll let you guys watch this video and, and, and see what you guys think. Alright guys, so while we jump into this video, I definitely want to go over what uh, we all were running. So, infuse Ancient Coatings on both weapons. Powerful Oak Flesh Bomb for the physical damage resistance. And then, uh, me personally, I was running the Roasted Rabbit with Seasoned Vegetables, which provides extra uh, constitution. Provides, you know, tankiness, extra tankiness for me. And I'll go over that for you guys. So everybody stops, lets the tank engage. That's where uh, Path of Destiny and the Shockwave come into handy. And I mean, nowhere near, I'm uh, nowhere near perfect. Uh, just kind of giving you guys a breakdown of, of how we made it. So as you can see, even though I'm taking aggro, uh, my stamina is pretty much always staying really high up. Uh, and that, that's where that nullifying and invigorated come in handy from the Void Gauntlets. When they put that down, that increases the uh, stamina regen. It's almost instantaneous for the tank. That is a vital, vital nail for this. All right, again, tanks engaging first, pulling aggro, maintaining that aggro. Healer's kind of playing around the tank. That shockwave comes in handy. Kind of hard to see what's going on, but I'm just pretty much whacking away at him, holding my shield up, trying to stay healthy, popping my cooldowns. Uh, now that that's kind of where the uh, the clear out would be really helpful to get me out of that corner if I was about to die.
So uh, you'll notice that the uh, the vampiric guys, I am trying to consistently heavy attack them whenever I can with my sword. The one that has that deals the disease, that lasts for eight seconds. So I try to keep a mental note of how often I use it. I'm letting my team communicating, uh, communicating to them whenever I use that heavy attack, letting them know, hey, he's diseased. You can apply that damage. Pull an aggro, shield bash. Again, more CC lockdown, applying that rend with that shockwave. Path of destiny. Haunting. Tighten them around slightly. Trying to get heavy attacks out. Break that stamina down, but we just instantly cleared them out. Now here, this is going to be uh, super important. Maintain these two. I'm going to be fighting them. Now, it's super important to kind of keep an eye on this. So the archer that normally comes in, the team needs to take care of them, not the tank. The tank needs to hold aggro with, the, uh, with Dolos. The team is going to take care of the archer for me, kind of help me out. So I'm not getting shot in the back when I'm kiting this guy around. You'll also notice that uh, at the bottom right there, there's going to be a timer that ticks down. That's the dots. So for you guys that are doing DPS, keep an eye on that timer. It's very important that you time your attacks to let that timer run out. Because if they consistently stack up, you're going to take a lot of damage and you're going to wipe instantly. Again, the Vampiric, trying to apply these heavy attacks whenever I can. Trying to keep that aggro, trying to keep his shield down, break it as much as I can. Letting my team deal that damage. And see whenever I apply that disease, he just melts completely. I feel like that's just such a big deal in this. So normally you would run all the way down, kill everything at once and clump it up. So what we found works best, kill the two guys at the top of the stairs. You don't want to, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew in this. Trust me. Don't talk to Scylla right away like you normally would in a, in a standard Lazarus run. Get rid of the archers. The team should be focusing the archers while you are, as the tank, dealing with this guy in the middle, Lazarus Reaver. Applying those heavy attacks, applying that disease, keeping them stunned, CC'd. This is what works best. I'm 
And again, you can see the void gauntlets on the ground. Constantly keeping my stamina up, applying the heavy attacks over and over and over. And the vampire just really has no effect. Or it's negated almost to completely nothing. And remember, this is timed. You gotta get it uh, to get gold done in 35 minutes. So, another thing that a lot of people uh, might not know about the chest in, in Lazarus currently at the moment seem to only be dropping like 500 gear score items. So, I believe, uh, from what I remember, the most part, we skip the chest. Just picking up loot where we could cutting corners because you'll get to the point where when you upgrade your uh like armor and weapons and everything you'll clear it faster but initially to kind of cheese it through skip the skip the chess Trying to pull aggro on those archers. Now on these archers, I, I try to maintain aggro to, to me. That way they can attack them and kill them. On this guy, he's a little tricky. Okay, so have to stay out of that AoE, but applying that disease. Um, what I had my team do is the little mobs, the skeletons, they were responsible for killing them and keeping them out of my way. So I could constantly maintain that heavy attack on this guy and it get the disease. Because see how they get in my way? Honestly, I can't, I can't get that heavy attack off and apply that disease over and over and over if they're in my way. So what we, we figured out works best. The team will clear them out. The tank will apply the disease. In the bathe chambers, I've seen this done a few different ways. Try to maintain that aggro, stay around, hike them. You see them. This was a little messier than I would have liked, but we did group them up. Barely survived, but I did survive. Partially. It was a close one. It was it was messy. The easiest way though would be to group them up um, behind the bathing area, of course, but kind of messed this up. Burned a lot of time here. Mistakes were made, it happens. But I kited them around to get my team revived. Because you don't want to wipe. That's the worst. And the heavy attacks begin. Super messy on the stairs right here. Super aggravating as well. Non-stop heavy attacks, applying the disease, breaking him down, maintaining that aggro while I can. This guy runs like crazy, man. You can cancel out his jump with that shockwave. I try to stand on the edge of the uh, void gauntlet. Maintain that stamina. So 
to save time. Everybody uh, does their hand washing and everything after everything's killed. But somebody, I think, yeah, somebody did forget. Now, uh, with Scylla, this is super important. This is where the Void Gauntlets come in handy because she will tear through a tank's stamina in a heartbeat. Do not attack until the tank draws that aggro first and maintains it. Make sure that it has it because she will turn on you regardless of aggro or not. But it does help whenever the tank maintains that aggro right away. Void gauntlets are down. Look at my stamina. Also, you let her, the stacks uh, add up on her. I believe we got up to 19 on this one. Before popping the orb down. Seemed to work best for us. As long as those void gauntlets are down, my stamina is up. I'm, I'm okay. Your tank should be fine. Was it? Yeah, 19 stacks. This is, uh, whenever she's not attacking, uh, and she's doing her magic damage, the, the tank should have a hammer out and heavy attacking, dealing as much damage and possible DPS to kind of help out. If you have a full, we already tried it multiple ways. If you have a, uh, full constitution tank, it's not going to work out well for you. You need some damage in there. And as you see, my stamina is just constantly going up from the Void Gauntlets. Pull an aggro, that way we can get a revive out. If you have a good tank, don't know what to do on that. And I always try to attack in between uh, holding the shield and try to, to try, try and time up everything. It can be kind of difficult, but, you know, as long as you get that timing down, the tank kind of knows what they're doing and you're getting that little bit of extra DPS. I know it's not a whole lot, but also Scylla will do her AOE on the third circle. Third orb. We actually lost somebody on this one, but we were A-OK. -okay. Also, when you're on Scylla, you want to stay on top of her until that goes down. Because if you don't and you start running away too soon, you'll drop another AOE on where you're headed. I also personally like to run the powerful uh, Oak Flesh Bomb on this because she does so much physical damage at times. Just that extra survivability.
Never stand on that rock over there, because you will get blasted off. Also, a tank should be able to block that with a shield. Perfect timing, right? I was about to be toast. So we did get the uh, the chest on this one because we were looking at the time. We had plenty plenty of time. It looked like plus the the people that died had to run all the way across anyways. So you can kind of cut corners there. If somebody dies, you can loot. If not, skip it and go. We still do the 2-1-2. We'll put a spear on each side and tank in the middle. Uh, I know this is a little bit of cheese, but run up top. The tank should hide up in this corner. I tried to be a little brave soul here and do some crazy stuff, I think. It's just all about that timing. Let my shield down in between where I could regain that stamina. Waiting for my team to come through. Almost died. Still able to taunt for my team. Alright, so on this one, uh, you're, you're just going to aggro this guy first. Uh, Astros. So, and the main reason is you do not want to fight the, the archer and the guy with the shield at the same time. It is not going to be a fun time. Got to damage him up. Heavy attack by the disease, can't heal.
So you're still going to kite these guys all the way to the edge. You're going to pull them through. Past the shrine. What we figured out works best is whenever you actually clump them up together. You're going to run all the way through to the last, the very last room with the stairs. The tank should turn. Path the destiny. What we figured out was line of sight. Didn't do it quite as well this time, but we kind of got it down to an, uh, a science. But you'll clump them up and just kill everything right here at the door. Always remember what's most important is you don't want to wipe. Even if you don't make the 35 minutes, you don't want to team wipe. And do kill everything here. Also, right here we kill, uh, we split off the Lazarus Reaver and uh, the Lieutenant Dan. Again, applying those uh, disease heavy attacks. Just constantly. Same thing here, tank runs in, show bash, pulls aggro, void gauntlets are down. And applying the disease. Now here you can kind of, uh, you know, the chest that you normally get here. While the person's unlocking, we can grab that. Rush to it, the coffer. Usually the person that was opening the gate will just run past it.
I actually popped a honing stone for this. For both weapons. And I actually respect right in the middle of this. To try and get out as much DPS as possible. Alright, so you'll throw one void gauntlet down. I think I actually threw both of them down on this one, but normally what you'll do, uh, what we kind of figured out works best, is you throw one, one void gauntlet down AoE, and then once that one runs out, kind of throw the second one down, so they'll stack. You constantly keep putting those void gauntlet AoEs down. All right, so our healer actually went down here, um, but it wasn't worth to even revive him to peel off because the healer didn't, not because the healer didn't offer anything, but because the healer doesn't do anything as far as damage. It just would have been completely useless to revive him and waste that extra DPS that we were dealing while he was, while uh, Chartus was down. So we just kind of left him over there. But he didn't die for nothing. <laughs> 